Hello everybody, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Hope you're doing well wherever you are and thank you so much for being here today, part of this journey of getting a little older and dealing with all kinds of complexities. Today I want to talk to you about something that um, is probably on the minds of many women in our community. As we get closer to the winter holidays, uh, we are um, looking forward to celebrations with family and friends, but also to being with people that we perhaps have had challenges with in the past and maybe have been hurt by them or feel that we have some unfinished business and you know it's it's a time of year to perhaps practice a new superpower <laughs> the superpower of forgiveness now I know this is challenging and complex and I don't want you to think for a minute that I don't um, respect and understand some of the underlying things that may have gone on that I you know that have created the, um, the the difficulties with you and your family your friends um, and, but but you know maybe it's a time if you can for yourself more than anything else, to put this behind you and move forward. Now, one of our bloggers, Amy Newmark, wrote this article on how to use the power of forgiveness in time for the holidays. And, um, you know, as I'm recording this, we're approaching Thanksgiving, and of course there's the holidays over the winter months and Christmas and New Year's even, where it seems like emotions are almost amplified. You know, we've got like amplified emotions because we put so much weight on this time of the year as, as a time of reflection and looking back on the year. It's been a tough year. There's no doubt about it. This has been a very tough year. We thought that 21 would be a little softer on us, a little gentler, but it turned out to be a, a, just a challenging year all around. So I'm not surprised that many of you are probably feeling you know, a sense of in heightened emotions and, and it's really, really important. But we do find ourselves during this time of the year uh, having to talk to and communicate with people that we you know, we maybe haven't got such a smooth um, uh, journey with, or we haven't had a past history that's been smooth. And, you know, here's some ideas for how, as I said, for your own good and your own well-being and happiness to actually use that power, that power of forgiveness to let things go. Now, it may be that, you know, you can never forgive in the, the bigger sense, some of the things that happened and some of the things that were said and done, but you can, for your own good, let that um, that poison that can, that can you know, just cover you and, 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 and infiltrate your body, uh, let it go. So, the, um, Amy gives a couple of ideas here and, and some of them might, are, you, you're gonna say to me, oh, well, that, you know, Margaret, that's not gonna heal the wound or that's not going to uh, take away and erase the, the, the things that were, that were done to me or said to me, um, you know, but maybe it's time to to put the past in the past. I mean, that's actually the first thing that Amy talks about. You know, why just keep reliving that pain and, and the, the insult or the, or the conversation or the actions that hurt you? Just put the past in the past. And I know that, um, you know, that's not something that perhaps a lot of you can do because it, it's too painful, it's too hurtful, but don't bring it with you into the present if you can help it. And also don't take it to, into the future. I mean, okay, you've got it here in the present with you. It's it's absorbing you. It's taking over your happiness. It's preventing you from doing the things that you want with your life. And I know this. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not immune to this this situation. And I, I know how difficult it can be to forgive. And, but this, the, the superpower of forgiveness is not necessarily for the person that you're forgiving. And in fact, that could be the person that you're needing to forgive. That's another whole angle to this. That this actually could be you that you're that you're needing to forgive, and that's the topic we'll talk about in a second. So, you're letting the person who hurt you or did something to you that has you know has you know, damaged or or in, you know made this situation worse. But you know you're you're letting them control you. You're letting them control your life. So if you leave it behind and sort of soften the edges of what happened, maybe not the real things, but just the edges around it then you can be free. You know, it's just carrying that weight on your shoulders is just not, um, not, not a pleasant feeling. And in fact, she talks about that, about, um, you know, forgiveness not being, um, excusing bad behavior. It's not, it's not making, getting that person, you know, giving them a free uh, ticket, you know, out of jail ticket to actually, um, you know, not have to be responsible for what happened or what they did. It doesn't, it doesn't take that away, but it does actually stop relieving, reliving the bad events or the the negative conversations or the hurt. And sometimes, I mean, I don't know whether you have found this, but sometimes these uh, breakdowns in communication and these breakdowns in relationships are over such small things. You know, a lot of times we talk about estrangement from our children and our, our family friends, and we find that it was one trigger 
one trivial event, one word, one sentence, one, one even look, one, it could be just a very small thing that actually triggered a whole series of a ripple of, of negativity that, that left a scar. But you know, maybe if you can let that go and stop relive it, reliving those bad events, you can leave it in the past. The other thing, and this is more difficult, and I, when I read Amy's article, I, I was like, mm-hmm, okay, I can get this, but still, <laughs> still, they had a choice when, when someone hurt you or made a statement or did something to you or you, you know, whatever, you made a decision to, to separate, um, the, you know, they may had, had reasons too, but the, what she says in the second point is, try to figure out in your mind what motivated that conversation. And in the article, she actually goes through a very long um, uh, story. I think it was a television show where, you know, this this kind of unfolded with a couple and how it's like, you know, the woman was so angry and upset with what her ex-husband had done, but she, you know, she's held onto it and just kept digging it and digging it deeper. And then she stopped to realize that, you know, she was forgiving herself and it was like, she did the best she could. In that, in that relationship, they were in love at the beginning. She did the best she could and she doesn't hold herself responsible anymore. But the part of it that she then had, had to embrace was what motivated him? What was his motivation? What was the thing that pushed him to say these things or do these things that, that were so hurtful? And, and by understanding the motivation of the other person, you can you know, st almost start to assume that not only did you do the best you could, but they did the best they could. So it's really, really hard because sometimes a, a marriage, a friendship, a work situation, they all just crumble over silly things sometimes or even serious things. And we just we can never understand why would they do that? Why would they hurt me like that? Why would they make this difficult so difficult? But given that we're talking about a healing process here and we're trying to do things and offer suggestions that will help you to lift yourself up over these negative um, feelings, then maybe that's something you can do. You know, just try to understand what motivated them. We know we did our best and we maybe assume or understand or accept that they did their best too. So bottom line for Amy, and I think it's one for me too, is make forgiveness your superpower. And there's a Chinese proverb that she quotes, I like this, it says, gold cannot be pure and people cannot be perfect. We're not perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. And the people that we are holding uh, sadness or grudges or, or uh, I don't know, feelings of um, non-forgiveness non towards, they're not perfect. And we know this. And it's really hard. It's hard to let go. But when we get around the dinner table at Thanksgiving or Christmas or the holidays or any time and we see that person and we remember what they did or they, we remember that what they said, that we somehow just allow them to be free, be free of it. And it's just it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't you know, there's no money that needs to be exchanged. They don't even need to know that you've forgiven them. In fact, it probably sometimes is better that you don't say that because then it will bring up the whole situation again. But if you know in your heart that you have forgiven them, you've let them go, you've accepted it was you know something they were they were motivated in their own ways to do, and that you're 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 like claiming your freedom by forgiving them. I think that's a really cool way to look at it actually. And what you know what is it, it you know it gives you the opportunity to leave room now for you to be filled with love and to be filled with positivity. It doesn't keep that dark corner inside of yourself that, you know, you just want to hide in all the time because you just, well, maybe you even feel guilty about some of the things that happened. You know, did I cause that? Was that my, my responsibility? And I actually do remember looking at some of the articles, uh, the comments to the articles on estrangement. And it's really, really sad how uh, there's a lot of people that answer in the questions that they made the decision to split from their family or their their, their mom or their, their their dad because they were hurt and communication had broken down and they just couldn't take it anymore. And maybe you're feeling guilty or sad because you know in your heart of hearts that there were some things that were true there. And it's just always easy to take your own side <laughs> and to cover and surround yourself with people who support your your story and your memory of how it all went. And maybe it wasn't quite that straightforward. I know this is, these words are even hard to say because I know how much it touches so many of you in a very, very deep and powerful way. But I think maybe even practicing the power of forgiveness um, with yourself is a good place to start. And then when you get around the table with these people, or you meet them for the holidays, even in a casual setting, to just know in your heart, I've forgiven you. 
you'll feel lighter. <laughs> Actually, you know, Amy talks about the fact that it's like this whole thing of, of feeling guilt, feeling guilt and, and, and inability to forgive. It's like a, like a really heavy mask, like a heavy cape that we're wearing, like a super cape. <laughs> and it's like, we need to take that off. We need to, our superpower is subtle and beautiful and refined. And it's a sign of our maturity and a, a sign that we're ready to put the focus back on us. So I hope that you found that a useful conversation. Please leave your comments below. Are you holding grudges? Or resentments? Are they keeping you from fully enjoying your life as it is now? Leave your comments in the section below. We're here to help each other through these tough times and perhaps with someone's other, other person's comment will help you to um, let go of your own, uh, the own feelings of, of um, intolerance or lack of forgiveness and just be free, free yourself. So if you like this video, please do me a favor and press at least press the like button because that allows the video to be shared. But also subscribe to this channel. I do four videos a week. Our bloggers also publish lots of articles and videos and we'd love to share them with you. So just press the subscribe button and if you know, want to know when the uh, videos are released, just the notification bell next to it and know that I would appreciate it so, so much. Take good care of yourselves, sending you all lots and lots of love. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being here. I do appreciate you so, so much. Take good care, everybody. Talk again soon. Bye for now.